Macintosh, the marketing ace, follow his lead to the winning place with AI McCullough Spin. Join him now, learn to win. Learn his way, don't delay. If you do, you'll make your fortune today. All right. Hey, welcome to the show. And of course, this is Bill McIntosh, your host. And I'm here to help you with your business. And so it's my mission in life to help entrepreneurs like you build their first business. Or if you've got your business already up, I want to help you grow it to highest ever levels. And that is what this show is all about. Now, I have been building and growing businesses online myself for over two decades now. And I've been able to generate over a $100 million in results. And I say that not to brag, but because I'm I want to bring that hard won experience to help you. So that is the entire purpose of today's show. And uh, I'll be doing some training today. We're going to be diving in to two very important topics. One is something called a custom GPT. You've probably heard of chat GPT, maybe not a custom GPT. It's something special inside chat GPT that you can use to make more money. And I'm going to show you seven different custom GPTs that you can use to make more money today. And then we're going to talk about email marketing. And if you know me, you know that I use email a lot. And I send a lot of emails because it makes a lot of money. Um, and we're going to dive into three case studies that's going to show you how you can get your first thousand subscribers. So if you haven't yet built your first newsletter list, your first email list, we're going to get into how you can get started. And I'll give a little background on email marketing as well, because I've got quite a lot of experience there, having brought in tens of millions of dollars in revenue directly tracked to email. So we'll uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's check in with the chat. So we do have a, a live chat during today's show. I just got finished. I've been on air already for uh, over an hour uh, with a challenge that we just we just completed a five day AI challenge. I think some of my challenge members are here. So who here is from the challenge? Who in the chat was part of my AI five day challenge? Um, let me know who's a challenger. Like you I guess call yourself a challenger. So who is a challenger who's who's moved over from the challenge over to the live show? Let me know in the chat. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Good. I, I see uh Jason Collaboration Secrets, Leonard, uh Vernon, let's see, Carrie, Reg Regina. Okay, I reckon okay. Hey, hey Blake, uh Canary Talk. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, hey, I'm glad for those of you who switched over from the challenge and joined me here. Looking forward to uh, being able to hang out with you. I think I've made a few new friends from that AI challenge. That was really cool. We did a little product launch. It wasn't a huge one, but we did a launch, um, got up some affiliates to promote this five-day challenge. I spent five days teaching people how to use AI to build a, a, an e-learning business. And um, we had a lot of fun together. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it made some new friends, I think, in in during that challenge. Um, so, uh, but yes, to, we fit, completed day five of the challenge, and now here we are with my YouTube show. Uh, now, let's see here. I need to power up. I desperately need a little bit of this stuff um, after a a week of nonstop live training. <laughs> so I've been on live every single day at least an hour, many days up to four, four hours of live streaming combined between, you know, different trainings I've had to do the challenge bonus trainings, live shows like this one. It's been, uh, it's been quite a week of being on live and uh, yeah. So with that, we're going to get into uh, today's show. Um, and our first segment is about custom GPTs and I need to get my screen sharing going. So I hadn't yet had a chance to do that. Um, and one thing I'll say, a little plug for the channel, is that I would recommend that, um, let's just get screen sharing going, get that popped up there. Okay, cool. So I would recommend that if you haven't yet, please subscribe here on YouTube. So I do live trainings every week and 
We release additional training all throughout the week, every single week. And it's all geared towards how you can get more traffic to your websites, how you can build internet businesses, how you can use digital marketing strategies to grow your business. And that's all I cover. And my goal is to help entrepreneurs like you. So if that sounds exciting and you'd like to be part of that, then we're building a, a fun community around this channel. If you want to be part of our community, then give me a subscribe, tap that subscribe link. You'll see it down below the video so that you can be notified and be part of our future trainings. Um, and then of course, help me feed the YouTube algorithm. Give the video, tap that like button. If you get, if at any point during the video, you get some value out of hanging out here with me, I, I encourage you to tap that like button um, and it does help the channel. It helps YouTube understand that our content is worth spreading and sharing to, with others. And so it'd be very helpful. All right, we're gonna go to the screen and then we're gonna get into, let me just get this going. Okay, got the screen sharing set up and we're ready for the next segment. Oh, got to get my teleprompter going. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so those of you who are new to the channel, I record these segments. So you might hear me do retakes. I might redo a section or you might hear me make notes for my video editors. Um, so just so you know what's going on, but as you being here as part of the live experience, you get to watch all that. And after I'm done, we'll do on topic Q and A regarding the subject of the training. And uh, of course the next subject is all about custom GPTs. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> Custom GPTs have been all the rage. You've probably heard about them. They're special GPTs inside of chat GPT that you can use for all kinds of different things. But today we're gonna to be diving into what are the profitable ones that actually make you money. So if you've ever wondered how to actually use them to get profit in the door, that's what we're talking about today. And ever since the GPT store is what they call it, has come out, I've been experimenting with dozens of these custom GPTs, some of which I've even created myself. So uh, out of dozens of the ones I've looked at, I have found, I think are we, okay, here, hold on. I think we're gonna have to, gonna have to retake a section here. So producer Nick, can you come on mic a second? Yes. So are we doing nine or seven? Seven. Okay. So I'll have to mentally change the nine to a seven. <laughs> okay. So, all right, here we go. Note for editor, obviously edit that out and start over from here. Here we go. Out of the dozens that I have looked at, I have found seven to be extremely helpful. These seven GPTs could help you grow your business by saving you time, making your business content, helping you do research. And at the end of the day, they help you get more profit in your pocket. So watch to the end because I saved my favorite GPT of all time for last. So the first one we're gonna talk about is something called the negotiator. And so let's pull it up and I'll show you really quickly too, in case you haven't, you're not familiar with custom GPTs. We'll talk a little bit about them and I'm gonna pull up my screen and uh, get this around here. And so this one is called the negotiator. So in chat GPT, you'll see um, this thing that says explore GPTs. And so if we click that, and open it into a new tab so I can preserve this, you notice there are all of these things, they call them custom GPTs. And these are created by everyone. You can even create a custom GPT if you'd like. We've made them, producer Nick on our team here at the channel has made them. And I've used them for lead generation. I've used them for all kinds of different things. So I've made a custom GPT and it has brought me in a ton of subscribers to my mailing list. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, they're in here and you can use them as an end user and you can create them and share them with others. So this is also kind of called the GPT store. And we're gonna be talking about the seven favorite ones that we have today. So we're gonna move the, that and come here. 
Um, and the first one is the negotiator. And the negotiator is an official GPT. It's actually produced by OpenAI, the company that makes ChatGPT. They created this themselves. And here's how this GPT describes itself. So let's see if we go to, where's the about? Ah, why don't I see that? Okay, why don't I see the about? There we go. Okay. Note for editor, we'll edit that out. <laughs> here, we go to about. Um, and you can see here, I'll help you advocate for yourself and get better outcomes and become a great negotiator. So that's the purpose of it. And with this GPT, you can approach your next deal. So in business, you're always negotiating. You're always striking deals. And whether that's with vendors, sometimes with customers, maybe business partners, um, all kinds of reasons that you're constantly making deals. And so with this, you can practice and use it to come out on top. So let's play around with it for just a little bit here. And um, so they gave some examples. Could you role play a salary negotiation with me? Could you prepare to negotiate for a car purchase? Walk me through uh, figuring out, I don't know what BATNA is, but um, okay. Can you manage my emotions how do I manage my emotions when negotiating? Let's try that one. So we click that one and it's gonna give me some tips and advice on managing emotions because you have to be logical um, when it comes to negotiating. You can't let your emotions take you over or you lose the negotiation, right? Okay, so then we can get advice and then I think we can even come in and give it some specific scenarios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the, the negotiator and I'm going to ask it. So let's do this. So let's do a new chat with the negotiator. And let's just ask it. And let's say um, I'm mid-negotiating for, for the purchase of a new business, which is true. I'm doing that right now. Um, I want the owner to drop the price, oops, by 50% and accept some seller financing. How do I do this? Okay. So this is actually a real world scenario that I'm going through right now. So it's going to give me advice and uh, it can even role play with me if I wanted to get into explaining how I might use it. So uh, pretty darn useful, especially if business negotiating is something that you're a little rusty at or maybe it's new for you. But uh, yeah, it'll role play, help you figure it out, help you come up with the right presentation to make, the right offers to make and help you negotiate the best possible deal for you. Now, coming up to our second GPT, this is Canva GPT. So you can use it to make social content for your business. You can use it to make a lot of different things, actually. But let's take a look, and we'll dive in especially for social content. So let's take a look at that. So here's Canva GPT. And Canva itself, you might be familiar with, it's a great resource for making designs in your business. So whether it's graphic ads or whether it's uh, uh, images or different elements of things you might use in social media, but anything to do with designing graphics of all kinds and even doing video and slide presentations, it can do a lot. But, so Canva is a great resource for all kinds of things in your business. But with the official Canva custom GPT, it got a whole lot easier to do. So here's how the GPT describes itself. So let's take a look here and look at their about section. Effortly design anything, presentations, logos, social media posts, and more. So that's pretty cool. So you just give it a text prompt and you get an instant Canva design. You can make YouTube thumbnails, Instagram posts, logos, presentations, etc. So let's go here and let's ask Canva um, 
can you make a social media graphic for me to use on um, Instagram for my dog training business? I'd like it to be about helping dogs walk on a leash. Let's see what it does. Okay, it's gone to work. It says, please hold on for a moment while I work on this. So Canva wants to talk to ChatGPT, so I got to give it permission. So I say allow. And it's doing its thing. We'll give it a moment here to uh, finish its uh, its talking. So it's done there. There is my design. I'm going to have to click it. Well, there it is right there. That's pretty cool. So I now have a graphic that I could use on Canva. And if I click it, it's actually going to open the graphic right up in Canva where I can edit it. So I can actually edit this. So let's say I want to edit this and just come right in. And now I can change it to whatever I want. Like, let's say I want to make this text bigger. Go We'll make it even bigger. I am not a designer, so please don't judge me on my, on my design skills here. And I'm colorblind, which makes it even, even um, more fun to make designs. But uh, so we can change the text color. Uh, we'll change it to red or whatever that is, orange, peachy, or whatever that color that is. Uh, so you get the point. Um, so I can come in here. I can add more text. I can do all kinds of things. Um, and then uh, we can save it and export it out of Canva. Um, or if you like it right here, straight out of the custom GPT, I can right click it and, and save it. So we could save that um, straight from uh, chat GPT as well. Pretty cool, right? Now, GP <laughs> boy, can't speak. GPT number three, which rhymes apparently, <laughs> is a thumbnail maker by NVIDIA AI. You can make thumbnails for your YouTube video. So if you're doing YouTube marketing like I am, then you can use this to make your thumbnails. Let's take a look. So here's the thumbnail maker. And this one lets you make really good YouTube thumbnails with just a single text prompt. And let's take a look at the about. Thumbnail maker says that it generates eye-catching thumbnails and videos and videos by NVIDIA AI. You just ask for a thumbnail, let it ask you some questions, and you're good to go. Now, if you have an NVIDIA account, it will make you an AI-generated YouTube video to go along with your thumbnail. So let's, let's play with this. So we'll say, I want to make a thumbnail for my video. And absolutely, it's going to make my thumbnail for me. Let's see what we need to do here. So I'd be let's start off by the title of your video. So let's let's actually see if we can make a thumbnail for this segment. Um, the seven most profitable custom GPTs that help. Ah. Easily bring profit into your pocket. I think that's kind of long for a YouTube video, but I just made that up as I'm sitting here. So I'm sure we're going to change that before we launch this video. Okay. All right. It's actually given me a recommendation of what to put in my thumbnail. And then it's going to... Uh, going to actually generate it. Let's see what it does. So it's described what it wants to do. And is there asking me if there's anything I want to do different? And, um, and I'm not going to change anything. That sounds great. Let's just see what it comes up with, please. Let's see. Hey, it's making me a thumbnail. Like it can't possibly be that easy, right? Let's, let's see what, 
Let's see what it comes up with. I'm a little skeptical, but let's find out what does it actually make. Okay, come on. Let's hurry up and give me my thumbnail. <laughs> I'm going to have some coffee while we wait for the thumbnail. Oh, there we go. So let me scroll up so we can see it. All right, well, that's okay. Um, let's see. Do you like any adjustments? Um, uh, let's see what happens if I say, please make the colors louder and add some text. Okay, and let's see what it does. So, and the cool thing is, if it doesn't come back with the perfect one out of the box, we can keep talking to it and we can keep refining and adjusting and improving until it gives us what we want. Yes. Now it's gonna make me another thumbnail. And so by going back and forth and, uh, and working with the GPT, you can come away, even if it's not perfect, you could take download the image and pull it into Canva and improve it on Canva that we just talked about in the previous one. So we can actually get it to create our YouTube thumbnail, pull it into Canva, and then finish the process there if we so desired. And so let's see what it's making for me. Okay, this is kind of interesting. This might work. So there we go. There's our example thumbnail. And if I wanted to drop in, uh, let's say, uh, let's say I had a, a picture of me, you know, I want to put my face on it. I could drop a little profile pic of me on here. Um, maybe put a, an arrow or some other text on it if I wanted to, but that's not a bad start. Okay. Next up. Innovator. So you can come up with clever ideas, brilliant ideas for your business with this custom GPT. Let's take a look. So Innovator, it will go to about. Um, Innovator it helps you brainstorm smart ideas to solve the problems that you have to address in your business. So here's how the custom GPT describes itself. It helps generate good ideas. So to get started, you just hit the button that says, I want to generate an idea to solve a problem. And I'll walk you through a quick five-step process to come up with the idea to, uh, to do here. So let's take a look. So it's going to help us solve a problem in just five steps. And let's see here. And I want to generate ideas to solve a problem. So we'll start there. Please share the problem space you're interested in, and I'll help frame it in an open-ended questions for us to explore. Let's say um, my YouTube thumbnails don't seem to be getting as many clicks as I'd like. Okay, let's just say that is the issue we want to address. I mean, heck, anyone could use more YouTube clicks, right? So uh, based on your concern about YouTube thumbnails, here's a list of questions that aim to address the broader goals. How can we click click through rates? How do we make YouTube thumbnails more engaging? How do we optimize YouTube thumbnails to capture the target audience's attention? Um, and do these questions resonate? Um, let's say number three especially. Great choice. Uh, now, move on to phase two. We're going to start by generating 10 original ideas to address this question. So it's going to brainstorm, and it's actually doing some analysis, and it's going to give me 10 ideas on how to actually better tap into my target audience so I can create thumbnails that will get higher clicks and you know better results. And so this could be done in any sphere. Let's say, for example, you're running YouTube ads. Uh, and they're not getting the results, or you're running ads on Facebook and you're not getting the results you'd like, 
or let's say you're doing search engine optimization or you're having trouble with WordPress or whatever trouble you're running into, the things that you want to improve, come on over and talk it out with Innovator, this custom GPT. It's pretty cool. So it's doing some work. It's created a document. It's searching the web to help me find some answers. And let's give it a moment and then we'll move on to the next GPT. Come on, taking a little, taking a little long here, but it'll get to a, it'll get to a solution for us in a moment, which while we're waiting, oh, it came on just, I was gonna, <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's asking to move on to phase three. Oh, I see. So here are the ideas. There's the 10 ideas there. It did something a little weird. This is not the way I, I expected it to respond, but, but we got our 10 ideas right here um, on how to actually improve targeting for our audience. So we can copy all of this and paste it into a Word doc if we wanted to. Um, so those are our ideas and those come from it doing actual internet research as well. Um, then here, Okay, wow, it gave us actually 10 more. So we got 10 ideas and then 10 more based on uh, on the research. Um, and no, I'll just say no, okay. I'm gonna continue analyzing and go through that. And so for the sake of speed, um, I'm going to, uh, well, here, we'll let it do its thing. Okay, so I, rather than playing with this one, we're gonna we're gonna let it finish out its own thing, and we're, I'm gonna move on to the next one for for us here at the show. So note for editor, you can edit that and work around it, um, and then we'll wrap up this one with this right here. So note for editor, cut, edit, improve, and then wrap up this GPT here. So with that GPT, we can actually debug, problem solve, and improve our business in almost anything you could imagine. Now with that, let's move on to GPT number five, and that's Scholar AI. And you can have Chat GPT do academic level research for content. So let's take a look at this and I'll explain how you would use it in your business. So here's Scholar AI. Let's go to the about. An AI scientist. That sounds impressive, right? Generate new hypotheses, analyze text, figures, and tables from 200 million plus research papers and books. Okay. So this is Scholar AI. And um, in this example, so we was playing with this a little bit ago. Um, but in this example, let's say that you have a business that is in the, you know, it could be in a health business. It could be a business where maybe you're selling supplements or you have training or guides that help people with nutritional deficiencies and you want to source um, uh, official legitimate documents. Well, this will do it for you. So many times for things that are, uh, um, you know, scientific, if you're looking for studies and so forth, AI has a hard time with that. It actually is known to do what's called hallucinations, where it will make stuff up, it will lie, it'll get things wrong. But with Scholar AI, you can use it to actually comb through hundreds of millions of books and academic papers. And it's actually what, where ChatGPT would normally hallucinate. It's going to give you legitimate sourced good information. So let's say you're writing content on the effects of caffeine on sleep, maybe. Maybe you want to write a blog post or an article about it. Well, you could use Scholar AI to help you find all the research on the topic that you can reference in your article or in your training or in your whatever documents you want to make. And for this one, you will need to make a, an account with Scholar AI. It, they have a free plan, but let's take a look here. So we did previously, we said, find me studies on sleep. So again, and then we it, so it did exactly that. So here's a study on sleep assessment sleep disordered breathing, sleep apnea. And so let's actually try a new chat. And let's say, let's say, for example, um, 
please find me studies that support taking creatine to preserve muscle mass in the elderly. So I actually am kind of a, a, a nutrition buff and I'm very into um, uh, things like this. So, you know, I actually have a, a, a business that uh, is in the health niche. And um, so this is something, a, a very real world example of something that I might need to write about. And so uh, this would be the example of taking creatine, which is an amino acid, which is um, not a drug or any kind of weird thing. It's just an amino acid that you can take that has been proven to help you retain or build muscle mass. So let's say I wanted to write an article about the benefits of, you know, people that are getting older taking creatine to preserve muscle mass and have improved their longevity. So it is actually going to now go out and source my articles for me. So do you want, it wants to talk to scholar AI and it's going to come back and give us our answers. There we go. It's come back with several studies that are going to support the hypothesis of my article that I want to want to create. So I could literally copy and paste this analysis into the bottom of my article. And I now have sourced relevant information that back up my content. I mean, because obviously I'm not a doctor, so I can't, you know, if I'm writing an article, it's based on, you know, uh, my understanding as a layman. And so now I have referenced studies that I can quote in my article, or let's say I'm doing a course on a topic that, you know, like health that really could use some scientific backup, so to speak. Um, you now have a way to use AI with this kind of stuff without the fear of it hallucinating. Cool. All right. Let's get the prompter going and move on to the next one. Okay. <clears throat> GTP6 is email subject line GPT. And I love this one because I love email marketing. So email marketing is one of the most profitable things that you can do in your business when it comes to marketing. Um, and this custom GPT will help you come up with subject lines, which are vitally important because if do somebody doesn't open your email, of course, they're never going to read it and they're never going to click and they're never going to give you money. So the first battle in the email marketing game is to get them to open the email. So let's take a look. Email subject line GPT. Get ideas for your next subject line. Pretty simple. Um, so here, let's say, uh, give me 10 subject lines for an email about taking creatine to improve longevity. Stay on topic here. We'll, cover, we'll stay on the same topic. And let's just see what it comes up with. And so it's doing its analysis. It's going to come back and uh, hopefully give us, um, give us some good answers. Okay, 10 subject lines, here we go. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So I can tell you just from my experience in email marketing that several of these have a good shot at you know, getting good results. Um, that's pretty darn good. So if you've ever struggled to come up with a subject line to send an email, whether it's a marketing message, a content message, whatever it might be, come check out this custom GPT. It just might do the trick. Now, let's move on. We're going to go to the GTP number seven. And this is my favorite one on the list. And that's newsletter GTP by Push Button AI. So we're, it's something that we created, obviously. And here, nope. <coughs> oh, I've been suppressing that for a while and it just had to come out. So sorry about, sorry about that to the live audience. Okay. <clears throat> well, 
I'll pick up here for the editor. So note for editor, obviously edit out my sneeze. <clears throat> and that's newsletter GTP by pushbutton.ai. That's right. That's me. I'm the founder of Pushbutton AI. So we've created this to help you make your own newsletters. And as you know, I'm a little biased because I made this one, but it has to be my favorite custom GPT in truth. And that's because newsletter GTP helps you come up with a newsletter and write out all the issues that you might want to send out. So it actually creates all of your newsletter content and can help you build your whole newsletter. And the reason I'm such a fan of this is because newsletter marketing is powerful. It's profitable. My phone going off. It's powerful. It's profitable. And when you do it right, it can bring in a lot of money into your business. And I would know because I've brought literally tens of millions of dollars into my businesses using email. So you just ask it a couple of questions um, and the GTP will do all the work for you. So let's take a look at it. So I'm going to pull it up next. Okay, so here is the custom GPT. And to, by the way, it's free. You could use it. All we ask is that you be a subscriber of our newsletter. So all you got to do to get access to this custom GPT and to use it yourself is to go right now to pushbutton.ai slash subscribe. That's pushbutton.ai slash subscribe. I'll pop the link down below. And um, here live with the audience, producer Nick, if you could share the subscribe link with the audience in the chat, pop it out there so they can all see it. But it's pushbutton.ai slash subscribe. And every subscriber to our free newsletter gets access to this custom GPT where we can help you make your own newsletter. So sign up to the newsletter to make your own newsletter. <laughs> and uh, so let's take a look. So let's say I had a newsletter that was um, about longevity. So we'll just stick with that topic, okay? So we can say here, um, help me create an issue based on current events from the web. So I wanna write a newsletter that I can send to my email list to have some good content. And you can see it's asking if we're a subscriber. If we're not a subscriber, it's asking you to go subscribe. We've confirmed we're a subscriber and now craft a compelling email around specific topics, okay? So it says, can you share with me the main topic or industry your newsletter covers, your target audience, any specific sections or content, tone and style, okay? So we're gonna say um, my topic is um, longevity for people 50 plus who are interested in supplements and life style changes they can make to live longer high quality lives okay um i'd like to talk about creatine and chlorine in my newsletter. I happen to know there's some recent studies and literature that's come out about both of those. And so um, we can say, um, I want it to be casual, conversational, and written at the sixth grade level. Boom. Now let's see what is it going to do. Fantastic. It's actually writing my newsletter. So we could literally copy and paste this into a newsletter episode or ep a newsletter issue. Um, it's given us a uh, basically an outline for our newsletter right now. And then it's asking that we want it to proceed. So that's our outline.
Oh, I, I said the wrong thing. Never mind. Please proceed. I should have said to proceed with what you have. Okay. So it's actually going to write it now. So I'm uh, the the first step was that it outlined it to tell me what it was going to write, and now it's actually writing it for us. Now you could combine the power of the last GPT to source some uh, source content and probably feed it into this one to make sure that your content is even better. That, so it's like mixing and matching some of these custom GPTs. So it's going to go through and it's going to finish writing our episode for us. So then what we can do is copy that content and send it to our list for some email newsletter content, all written by a newsletter GPT. And to remind you, you get that by being a subscriber. It's free. It's complimentary to anyone who subscribes to our completely free newsletter called Ingeniosity. You can get access to that by going to pushbutton.ai slash subscribe, which will then unlock access for you. And you can get great content from us. We send out an episode every Friday where we cover modern marketing and AI in the use of business today. And so we'll, every week we'll be highlighting a specific strategy or a specific tool and how you can use it in your business. And it's totally free. So there you go. Now, let me see here. Okay, so that is it. So note for editor, I'm gonna do a little wrap up right now. So we'll do a wrap up here. <laughs> Custom GPTs are incredibly powerful, as you can see. And that's something that you need to be paying attention to. Go check out the, the GTP marketplace, the shop of GPTs that has been created by OpenAI. And go find some ones that you find useful and share them with me. Pop them down in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite GPT is for use in your business. I want to hear, and if it's something cool, maybe I'll feature it on a future episode. So yeah, share your favorite GPT down below in the comments. And of course, if you got value from this video, please give us a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm to help us push the channel so that YouTube knows that this content is useful and is worth spreading around. And we do content like this all the time. And we're live every week with a live show as well. And so subscribe to the channel. You'll also see down below in the video the subscribe button. Tap that subscribe button and uh, come join me on a future live episode. And until then, bye for now. Okay. All right, all right. So that is... Um, um, That is the first segment. And so for the live audience, what we're going to do is we're going to take a very quick commercial break. And then I'm going to be right back to answer all of your questions because I've seen the chat been very engaged. You guys have been very active in there. So um, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then I'll be right back and I'll answer all your questions. So we'll, we'll see you in just a minute. If you who are not yet a push button AI customer, then you need to check this out. And all you need to do is go to pushbutton.ai slash demo, pushbutton.ai slash demo, and you can get a live one-on-one -on -one appointment to get on Zoom and see this powerful technology in action. And with Pushbutton AI, it will build an entire business from bottom to top, everything you need from your domain name to your logo, to videos, to audio lessons, an entire course that you can sell as your own, a 30 day email sequence that it writes. You can send a daily email for 30 days, all written by AI and a whole lot more. It writes your sales page. If you're not sure how to write an expert sales page to convince people to buy stuff, it writes it for you. It writes a free report that you can give away to get subscribers to your list. It even creates and writes the opt-in subscription page to get people to subscribe to get the free report. And it goes on and on and on. It even writes your first 10 blog posts for you and it can do so much more. Social media posts, ads, all of these things are done and all you have to do is answer a couple of questions and push a button. Now, Push Button AI is not available to the public at the time of recording this video. And the only way to get in is by invite to our behind the scenes beta access. And during your live demo, 
We'll show you the technology. We'll actually work with you to actually map out an entire course that you could sell as your own. We'll outline the course with you together on the one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And then if you so decide, if you're a good fit, you can come in, join our Push Button AI beta program and be in business with that very course by the next day. Go to pushbutton.ai slash demo to figure out if this powerful technology is right for you. You can register there. there. You'll book an appointment in the calendar. Be sure you show up. Our team will be very excited to meet you and show you how the tech works, outline your new course for you, and hopefully it's a fit and we can work together to launch your next business. All right, now YouTube's pushing out their ads as well. So we'll give everybody a moment to come back from the YouTube ad break. Uh, so I think we have our, our YouTube ads coming out, but um, yes. So let's do some Q&A. And first, producer Nick, are you out there? Yes, I am. Awesome. So the chat's been very busy. I haven't been able to keep up with it. So uh, can you uh, let me know what questions people have? about the custom GPTs. Sure. Um, well, a few people uh, were commenting on the, when you were producing the thumbnail, how the AI didn't want to spell correctly. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my own comment on that. There's an interesting, if you have Canva Pro, uh, there's a neat fix to that. They have, they call it the magic AI eraser. So just go in there, erase the text that's misspelled. It'll look like it was never there. It'll, it'll look clean. Like it wasn't poorly photoshopped. Yeah. Then you just put the correction text there instead that doesn't have the misspelling. And that's a that's a very quick and easy workaround uh, for the, the broken text that the thumbnail makes. Yeah. Well, it's funny. AI has certainly gotten better at spelling, but it's still not great. But, you know, just like a few months ago, you know, in the previous versions of all the image stuff, it was like giving a, you know, a, a kindergartner with a crayon and asking them to put something and spell it on the, on the photo. And it, it would <laughs> do a horrible job, um, but it's getting better. And I think soon we'll be at a point where the AI images to get it right every single time. But, uh, but that's good to know. Um, so I didn't even, I haven't used that feature myself. So thanks for the tip. Yeah. They actually, um, not too long ago, they rolled out a ton of AI features, AI design features inside of Canva that are, I use them actually. Uh, they're really good. Maybe we can talk about them in the future. Cool. But, uh, yeah. And uh, Bill, we had a question roll in from a another Bill. And he wants to know, with the ChatGPT store, how many of these customs are free as opposed to paid? Well, it, it's a mix. There's a lot of them in there. So I don't know the exact answer to that. And Nick, you can shed more light on this if you have an insight. But I, I don't know the exact answer to that. I do know that many custom GPTs require you to have accounts at the sites that they sync up with, um, you know, like in the challenge. Um, Bill, I think you were in the challenge. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, we talked about that GPT is uh, that I showed that helps you make slides, you know, like a slide deck. Um, and to use that properly, you have to have a paid account off the site that finishes the slide deck for you. So I think you do run into that you know, a good bit of the time, but there are a ton of them that are just 100% free. So, um, so it's hard to say exactly. And Nick, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, I, most of them are free. The ones that cost money are the ones that it seems like they will um, integrate with paid tools. Like, um, so the thumbnail maker, which mm -hmm. is made and sponsored by NVIDIA, um, if you go all the way to the end and you confirm that you like the thumbnail, it will then say, awesome. What now next step, let's make you a video that goes with it. it it's kind of clever. Cause then you have to go and sign up for an video account. And I, I think it's paid. So it's kind of, a lot of these are like, kind of like how, uh, we make newsletter GPT. They're like, it's like a freemium model where you get a lot of cool free features. And then to go to the next level, you have to, uh, get to sign up for their paid software offsite. Okay. Cool. All right. Next question. Yeah. Uh, one person wanted to know, do you have to be a Canva subscriber to get the Canva GPT? Uh, the answer is yes and no. It's no <laughs> to get um, the deliverables inside of chat GPT. 
But if you want to, like Bill was showing earlier, if you wanted to click it and then go into Canva and to be able to modify it, you do need an account. Um, there's no way you can go and click and edit the Canva pictures without a Canva account. There is a free version and a pro version. Um, I think you can use most of the designs produced inside of ChatGPT with the free version. But I highly recommend the pro version because all the AI tools that I was talking about in Canva, those are the ones that come with the pro version. Cool. Yeah, and I, th I think it's it's not anything crazy. I think it's only like 15 bucks a month, give or take. Yeah, Canva's, and well, and like you said, the free account, you can still do quite a bit with it, even just with the free account. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Anything else? So, oh, I don't, so I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's related to the GPT store or not, but someone wants to know if you know about X39. I do not. X39. Tell me about X39. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, cool. Well, then um, I want to remind everybody, too, that after the next segment, so today we're doing two segments. Well, that's just, just two, not four. Two segments. <laughs> after our two segments today, um, we're going to kick it open for open Q&A, wide open Q&A, where you could ask me anything. If there's anything I can do to help you as an entrepreneur, any advice I can give, any specific advice on ad campaigns for driving traffic, conversion, copywriting, strategy, whatever it might be, you can ask me anything as we get towards the end of today's broadcast. So we're going to do one more segment on how you can get your first thousand email newsletter subscribers in just a minute. But before we do, I'll check real quick. Did we have any other questions on GPTs before we move on? Yes. Someone wanted to know if there was a GPT for getting traffic. Uh, probably, but I, I don't, I can't recommend one at this moment. Can you? Uh, I can think, I, I can't think of anyone in particular. I know there are a lot that help with SEO content. So if you wanted to apply the training we have on this channel in terms of LSI keywords and blog posts and SEO content and use one of these custom GPTs on your website, that might be a good way to drive traffic. Um, I, I kind of want to make um, a GPT that's a, just like we have newsletter GPT. I, I kind of want to have a blog post GPT that's kind of like a co-pilot for helping you make a blog post. So maybe maybe that can be your traffic GPT. Cool. So producer Nick, I've secretly been working on a project that I don't you don't know about. I don't think. Um, actually, it's just me and two of our staff know about it, but it's an AI keyword research tool. And um, I have an idea about how we can make a custom GPT for it. So, um, yeah, we got to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a cool story. Talk about the negotiation GPT. Just, just a little, little inside story for the audience. So, I, I saw a business that was listed for sale, um, and it was a, a keyword research business. And I was going to buy it. I, I was negotiating to buy it. And then I had to figure out what happened. I got distracted. I get, life got busy. And then actually I missed it. And somebody else ended up buying it. And the reason I wanted to buy this business was so I could bring the keyword research, the basic keyword research tool, and add a bunch of AI elements to help. Um, There's some really cool things you can do uh, when you use regular standard keyword research tool and combine it with AI. And I had these ideas of that I wanted to take that keyword research business, buy it, and then improve it using AI. Um, and anyway, I missed the business. So, you know, I thought, you know what, what the heck? I'm going to email the guy who built it. He's He was obviously a tech guy. He wasn't necessarily a, a business guy. He was a developer tech guy. And I said, hey, I've got this idea to build this thing. You know, since you already built this once, could I hire you to build me my own? And he said, yes. And uh, we built a, a really cool AI tool that I'll be sharing with the audience in a future episode. And maybe we'll make a little freemium feature that you can use. We'll make a custom GPT that'll let you do AI keyword research. Um, you know, it's a paid tool, but we'll, I think I'm gonna set up a freemium level where you can use it, at least basic features for free. Um, so uh, but yeah, it's a, a, an example of like how I, I messed up and I missed out on buying the business, but if I didn't 
push ahead and go ahead and ask anyway and be like, hey, I realize you sold the business, but can you do this? And it was that extra little step of making that little ask and look what happens. I have a whole new business that we're launching because of just, uh, you know, following up with one email. Okay, awesome. Well, then um, with that, we're going to move on to the next segment. Um, but uh, so before we get to the next segment, which is all about how to build an email empire, but to start your email empire, you've got to get your first thousand subscribers, right? Everyone starts from somewhere. And so we're going to do a case study of three people who successfully started a brand new newsletter and quickly built it up to a thousand plus subscribers and scaled up into millions of dollars. So we're going to find out how they did it. And I've got a little advice for you on how to make the most amount of money with email marketing. So that's our next segment. Before we do it, we'll do a very quick commercial break and we'll be right back. For the present, celebrities or characters in this video are all fake and generated by artificial intelligence. <laughs> You know, the other day while I was uh, resting my eyes, I woke up to find that I'd built an entire online business. Really, Joe? How'd you manage to do that? Well, uh, you, you see, you, uh, I... Uh, Wait a minute, Sleepy Joe. Let me guess. You had push button AI do all the work, didn't you? That's right, Donald. It found me a fantastic domain name, built out a complete site, set up my shopping cart so I can get paid, and even wrote an entire email sales campaign for me all while I was napping. Well, I've been using push button AI too. And believe me, my new business, it's huge. The best, so much winning, you wouldn't believe. This push button AI sounds phenomenal. Oh, it is. It's almost as genius as I am. But with better hair, no doubt. Guys, guys, all this talk is boring to me. What everyone needs to do is click the link of this video and go to the masterclass to see how to use this powerful technology to build their own profitable online business. Well, if Elon says it, it must be worth a shot. You're right, Barry. Everyone should click the link right now. I can't believe I'm going to agree with Joe, but this master class sounds like it's going to be huge. Absolutely terrific. The best master class ever given, probably. OK, guys, how about we hit that link? Time is money. All right. So we have uh, YouTube is doing its little ad break as well. So those of you on YouTube premium are certainly not seeing the YouTube ads. And um, some of you may not see YouTube ads at all, but uh, they are being pushed out to some people right at the moment. And by the way, a little bit later, we're going to do a YouTube ad experiment. So stick with me for that. We'll do a little experiment. We're going to play around with some YouTube ads on the channel. And I need your help. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, before we get to that, though, we're going to do the next segment. Okay. And my teleprompter thingy died. There we go. Okay, let me get it ready. And then just like the last segment, I'm recording it. So you might hear me do retakes and make notes for my editor and all that stuff. But then once I'm done recording the training, then we're going to circle back and I'll do Q and A. So if you have any questions, you need any help to implement the training I give you, we'll do all your questions on topic right after that. And then we're kicking it open for open questions where you can ask me anything, especially any of you guys in the challenge. If you've been in the five day challenge with me, if you have any follow up questions or any other help or advice I can give you, then let's do that in the, the final segment here too. And ask me anything. Um, and with that, we're going to get, uh, get right into it. So let me just, get this set and get the right thing there. Okay, there we go. Here we go. <clears throat> if you're starting a business online, then you have to get serious about building an email newsletter list. And I would know because I've made literally tens of millions of dollars myself using email. And then this video here, we'll retake, note for editor, make a little uh, cut here. Here we go. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to get your first 1,000 subscribers fast so that you can build an email empire like I have. And together, we're going to break down three different people. It's a case study on how they built multi-million dollar email newsletters. 
but they all had to get started. So you're going to find out how did they build their first 1,000 subscribers. Let's get into it. Okay, let me do this. Again, editor can do their editing. And we'll go back to the screen. Here we go. Newsletter number one is 1440. 1440 is one of the biggest newsletters in the market with 3.3 million subscribers and over 200,000 new signups each month. They ranked number 79 on this year's Inc. 5000 list with 5,746 percent growth in the last three years. They employ a team of 15 full-time employees, and it all started with an issue that they sent out to just 78 people. And at this very early stage, their founder had this to say, we started sending 1440 once per week. We told ourselves if we didn't see a 40% plus open rate and a 10% weekly organic growth rate, we would stop. After week one, we saw a 60% open rate, which we still have today, and our audience of 78 increased to 91. So we kept going. For the next stage of the newsletter, they relied on newsletter swaps, which are cross promotions, where you actually get other newsletters to promote you in exchange for you promoting them. It's a very popular and inexpensive way to grow a newsletter list. You all, they also did giveaways on a platform called Dojo Mojo, which they said that allowed them to drive subscriptions very inexpensively with free giveaways. Let's take a look at that. There's Dojo Mojo. So they call it the one-stop shop for acquisition and engagement. And they also heavily prioritized making a world-class product, which led to a reader base that was obsessed with how good their newsletter was. So as a result, the newsletter also grew from organic word of mouth and referral, and they were able to use these growth levers until they hit 50,000 subscribers. So they went all the way from just 78 subscribers up to 50,000 by doing free giveaways, by doing swaps, and by putting out a really good product that their readers would refer and recommend. That alone brought them up to 50,000 subscribers. And with a 50,000 subscriber email list, you can make quite a lot of profit just with that. And then look where they took it from there. So at this point, and we'll go back to screen, <clears throat> note for editor, little edit job here. At this point, they were able to monetize and use the profits on paid Facebook advertising. So up to this point, they hadn't spent any money on paid promotion. And now they started driving Facebook traffic and they would spend a dollar to $2 for each subscriber that they got. And they went from uh, up to 100,000 uh, to their current level of 3 million subscribers using that paid Facebook advertising strategy. They tested ads on Facebook, but also Reddit, Quora, and a host of other platforms instead. And Erica, who is their lead of growth, said this about how much they spent. And she said, last quarter, we tested 1,500 different creative ads on the various channels. So pretty surprising, right? 1,500 different ads. That's the amount of testing that they needed to do in order to scale from 100,000 subscribers to up and beyond 3 million. Let's move on to newsletter number two. That's Morning Brew. In 2020, Insider bought Morning Brew. They spent about $75 million to buy Morning Brew from its founders. And it had, at that time, about 2.5 million subscribers. But how did they get their first 1,000 subscribers? Going all the way back to 2015, when they ran it out of a college dorm room. That's right. They started a college. I mean, the, here, a little retake note for editor. We'll edit this. That's right. They started this little business as a newsletter from their college dorm room that went on to sell $75 million that they got paid for some... Boy, I'm, I'm really butchering this today. Note for editor, another edit. <clears throat> and they went on to get paid over $75 million for that very business. Um, and this newsletter was able to grow to their first 1,000 subscribers and eventually 2,000 not with some slick landing page or some fancy opt-in or a squeeze page or paid traffic. 
they actually grew their first 2,000 subscribers in person with a quick pitch and a clipboard. <laughs> you see, these two new co-founders, Alex and Austin, reached out to different club members and professors all around on college campuses asking if they could pitch their newsletter at the beginning of class. So think about that. That's outside the box thinking. So where most entrepreneurs, I think especially digital entrepreneurs, they get very hung up in the technology and like making fancy pages and fancy processes and automation. They skipped all that and they just grabbed a clipboard and asked people if they wanted to join their newsletter. And so they passed out a simple piece of paper to students in the class to write down their names and their email addresses. And surprisingly, this is what took them to grow to over 2,000 subscribers. So their next stage, what took them from 2,000 to 100,000 came down to two growth levers that they used. Number one, they launched a robust ambassador program where they actually recruited college students. So they recruited like amongst their newsletter subscribers to get them to go out and refer others. So to do this, you have to think about that. They had to put out a pretty good newsletter so that people would be willing to then refer it to their friends. And they set up a little competition, a little game, made it a little fun. And college students around the country started referring their friends to sign up more. And growth lever number two is they ran cross promotion campaigns with other complimentary newsletters in the space. You heard me talk about this before. These swaps, these cross promotions are a very effective way. Once you get your first couple of thousand subscribers, you can leverage that into doing these cross promotions. You just contact other newsletter owners who have a similar audience to yours in a similar size list and you just promote each other. And it's a great free way for you to attract some new subscribers. So from the 100,000 mark and beyond, they actually were able to start monetizing and they, made, made, they started to make significant money and then they reinvested the money that they were making into paid ad campaigns. And from there, the rest is history. That's $75 million worth of history to be exact. <clears throat> I'll re-say that. That's $75 million worth of history to be exact. Now, newsletter number three is the Bear Cave. Let's take a look. It's estimated that the Bear Cave, a newsletter about controversies and bad actors in finance and business, it brings in about $900,000 in sales per year from over 60,000 readers. And its founder is only 25 years old. Edwin, the founder, started back in 2020 in a very scrappy way, kind of like the Morning Brew founders. At the very beginning, he went from zero to 3,000 subscribers by cold messaging all of his followers on Twitter. So he built a small following on Twitter, had 3,000 people following him there, and he just by hand direct messaged them and begged them to sign up for his free newsletter. Here's what he says. I spent three days, my eyes started to hurt, just DMing every Twitter follower, being like, sign up for this newsletter, please. And that's what built the early momentum. I clawed my way to 3,000 free subscribers by October. There were two major growth levers that propelled him the rest of the way. So let's do this. I'm going to come back here. So you see something in common here with some of these newsletters is it just because the traditional routes that someone might think about for building a newsletter, which is paid ads, for many people, that's out of reach. Some people don't have the budget. Some people don't have the experience. There's a variety of reasons why paid advertising ends up becoming a barrier. So they got clever. They didn't quit and decide it wasn't possible. Instead, they found an alternate way of how do they get their first subscribers and start getting some money in the door so that then they could invest in ads. And you'll see some of these things take a little bit of old fashioned, roll up your sleeves, hard work. But that's what launched these businesses. And every one of them is now a multi million dollar business. But they all started out scrappy with some clever ideas, some free guerrilla and word of mouth marketing. And that's how almost all of these have taken off. It's pretty interesting that they have this in common. So let, let's look a little further into the bear cave. 
So they produce world-class content. So they wrote intricate, high-level business deep dives that got mentioned in places like Rolling Stone. This high-quality content led to a lot of inbound growth. So they got links pointing to their websites, they got word of mouth, and people loved their product. And two, they did a bunch of collaborations. So Edwin says that he prefers to say yes to every podcast invitation he gets. So these podcasts, collaborations led to exposure to new audiences. So every time he does a new podcast, he's exposed to a new audience and his audience gets larger and larger. Okay. Okay, cool. <clears throat> and with that strategy, doing podcasts, you can start small. You don't have to jump on Joe Rogan to be effective at podcasts. If you're just starting out with a newsletter and you have content worth sharing and an opinion worth others hearing, you should do smaller podcasts as you grow your audience and move up the food chain, Get going to bigger and bigger podcasts as you have the clout. Again, a guerrilla type tra uh, tactic that many people would overlook because it's a little bit of hard work. It takes a little bit to be able to you know, book the podcast appointments, um, schedule, show up, actually be on camera. And it could be a little uncomfortable, especially if you've never done it before. But by pushing through and doing that extra bit of work, it's a great way to get free traffic. Now, I want to thank Newsletter Circle, First 1000 and Growth in Reverse for their research. And I want to fully credit their work. Um, their research that they did, the newsletters that I was showing there and the articles, are fantastic. So shout out to them. Check them out. They're a great place to look at case studies about business success. And I'm sure we'll feature them again on the channel another time. So I'm curious, whose story did you find most interesting? So if you were starting a newsletter, what would you do to get your first thousand subscribers? Let me know in the comments, which of these strategies is most appealing to you? Or maybe you hate them all. I don't know. But <laughs> drop it in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this subject. And of course, if you got value from this video, please tap that like button. It helps us feed the YouTube algorithm. And uh, also, if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. You'll see a subscription link down below. Give that a tap. And then you can be part of our live shows. We do every single week. And we're dropping content all the time on how to build and grow businesses. And I hope to see you in our next video. Goodbye for now. All right, that was segment number two. And um, we're going to do this. We're going to take a quick commercial break so I can have a little bit of coffee. <laughs> and then we're going to be back with your questions about building your first thousand newsletter subscribers. So think up your questions, pop them in the chat now, and then we will be right back. You can now launch your own online business with the click of a mouse. Sounds crazy, right? Guess what? It's now possible thanks to our game-changing AI software that's helping beginners build a successful online business. If you have tried and failed at building an online business or you've got no idea where to start, there is good news for you. We are entering a new exciting era of AI, and I'm here to teach you how to use it to build and grow an online business. Because I'm handing you a blueprint, a business in a box powered by AI, and it's called Push Button AI. Imagine a tool so smart it does all the heavy lifting for you. Builds an info product business, sets up hosting, launches the website, and even crafts engaging email sequences. Here's the thing. This isn't like anything else out there, and this is based on what's working right now. Push Button AI is based on my experience of generating over $100 million over the last 20 years and helping over 81,942 customers build and grow their own online businesses. If you'd like to find out more about this, Register now and dive into my free live demo to uncover strategies and traffic tricks that will pivot your business and skyrocket your online business from surviving to thriving. Imagine what your life would look like today if you bought Bitcoin when it was dollar one. You now have the same opportunity with push button AI since nobody else is doing this. Don't miss out this time. Hey, we're back except for those of you who are watching YouTube ads. So uh, we'll, you'll be back in just a moment and we will get started on Q&A. 
So let's dive in and um, we can do, actually, we'll just open it up. So we'll do questions on topic related to building an email newsletter list um, uh, and anything at all, anything you want to ask at all, go ahead and ask now and we'll uh, do our best to help you out in today's show. And I want to remind everyone that we have a newsletter. So we just started this newsletter. We're down, we have just a few thousand subscribers at the time of recording this. Excuse me. It's our Ingeniosity newsletter. Uh, and uh, in there, every Friday, we give you a deep dive on one topic about what you can do to make money in your business. It's either a traffic strategy, a growth strategy, a conversion and sales strategy. But we'll every Friday, we drop an episode uh, of our newsletter. And in there, we're also talking about newsletter marketing. And we have a free newsletter tool that'll help you create your own newsletter. So you join our newsletter to learn how to make your own newsletters. And you can easily do that by going right now to pushbutton.ai slash subscribe. That's pushbutton.ai slash subscribe. That will get you on the newsletter list. You'll be invited to get access to the newsletter GTP tool. And uh, yeah, and get all the benefits there. So that's that's our very own newsletter. And let's go to your questions. Producer Nick, what do we got? Yeah, so uh, we have a question from Stan and it's about solo ads. He says, I have an email solo ads question. If I have a budget for say $25 a day, mm -hmm. how do I get the solo ads provider to send out such a small amount every day? Or do you need to roll up a few days worth? Yeah, for, for solo ads, you would need to roll up a couple of days. Um, so if your budget's 25 a day, you know, I'd take a look at like what a week's worth of email is and then just drop it in one buy. So, you know, um, I forgive me for being math challenged, but let, let's do some math together, shall we? Let's see. So seven times 25, that's $175. So you know, so you could do a buy of that size once a week. That would be my recommendation. Yeah. Cool. What else we got? Okay. Uh, next question is what length do you suggest a podcast should be? That depends. Like all right, Joe Rogan does these monster podcasts. How long is he on for? It varies dramatically. Some some of them are like, I've seen like four hours. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, hey, he's the most successful podcaster out there. So, uh, you know, I know I don't think you have to do a four hour podcast. I think um, certainly anything less than thirty minutes is probably too short. Um, I I have actually seen fifteen minute podcasts where just it's a there's a couple of guys that uh, I'm actually I subscribe to them who jump on they just do a fifteen minute live show every every day basically <coughs> excuse me but that's a daily show right so they do like 10, 15 minutes every single day um, if you're doing a weekly show you know I would say thirty minutes is probably a little bit short an hour is a good nice sweet spot for a, a podcast. Um, and then of course you can go on if you've, you know, if you've got the content and you, it's interesting and useful and valuable and entertaining, then you can go longer, you know, but I would say uh, that, so a lot of it depends, but there, there's the guidance. There you go. What's next? Yeah, this is a good one. If I'm going to start a newsletter, will creating a Facebook page help? Sure. Yeah, I mean, a newsletter is a business, right? So like in the case studies that I showed, one of them literally sold their newsletter business for $75 million. So you should approach it like a business. So there's there's two ways to look at it. Either you've got an existing business and your newsletter is being like bolted onto it as a marketing tool, or the newsletter itself can be an entire business. And so treat it that way. If that's what you're doing, then yes, you should have a Facebook page for it. You should get it a, a presence on Twitter. Um, Heck, you could even have its own dedicated website just for the just for a single newsletter. That's if you're building a newsletter as a standalone business. So there you go. And uh, someone wants to know: Is our newsletter single opt-in or double opt-in? Single. I recommend single. Double opt-in. You just lose way too many subscribers. Way too many legitimate. It's 
it's more secure. It helps make sure that you don't get any accidental or fake subscribers um, to do double opt-in if it, you know, it helps to weed that stuff out. But you just lose, you lose like half of your subscribers with double opt-in. So, uh, well, on that note, I kind of have a question on that note. Um, if you're growing a newsletter, uh, would you prefer to have like double, like more expensive leads? Say the leads are five dollars, but they're way more engaged, and the open rate's like sixty percent uh, versus cheap leads that are significantly less engaged, but you have a high volume of readers. What would you? Which model would you prefer? I look at the math. So I don't really care. I mean, I mean that sounds sort of me. I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I do care, right? I, uh, but um, I look at the math. And so if I can spend 50 cents to get a subscriber and I'm making a dollar out of that, I'll go subscribers that are not engaged all day long. It really comes down to the math. And you know, there's so many different formulas of how the math works out. So you could have a $5 subscriber that maybe is really, really valuable. So it's more about the math of, are you able to get money back from what your subscribers are costing? And it's quite easy to make a positive invest, a positive return on your investment with unengaged kind of lower quality subscribers. It's totally possible, but it's also possible with very expensive, very highly engaged subscribers. It's just it's just really just a math problem. And I think it depends a little bit on the on the market. You know, there are some markets that just sort of lend to themselves to being less engaged. I'll give you an example is the make money online market, right? So people that are interested in internet marketing and make money online, kind of a, the more business opportunity type, you know, there's like a, a part of that market. That group is they're relentlessly marketed to their inboxes. I mean, some of you can probably relate, right? Or if you're on several uh, internet marketer kind of make money online lists, you know, there's a relentless assault on your inbox, right? And ads that you see every day. So you tend to be less engaged. This market as a whole tends to be less engaged just purely because there's so much volume of noise. And, um, but that market is totally possible to make a lot of money with an unengaged audience. Um, take another uh, uh, audience, perhaps. Um, it could be something like, um, I don't know, we'll go into a specific industry. Let, let's say um, uh, the, the pet industry, okay? People are just fanatical about their pets. And so you could have a, a, a list that is incredibly engaged. You know, they're opening like crazy, they're clicking like crazy, they share funny viral videos, they consume content on social media, and they're a little obsessive about that content. And so you could have a list like that that's very, very highly engaged. Um, and so it's it just wildly depends on the market, it really is what I'm trying to say. Next question. Yes. Um, so this is a question that says, in general, how do newsletter authors get content for current or very recent news? Um, well, a lot of that is just good old fashioned research. Um, you know, um, you know, there's a couple tools that you can use to follow. Um, Feedly is, is one of these feet and is Feedly F E E D L Y. Uh, so Feedly, um, and they have a free and a paid version. But you can basically subscribe to a bunch of blogs and, and news sources and keep track of the news. And then you can quote that news and use that news and generate a newsletter content. That's probably the easiest newsletter model there is, is just follow the trending news and summarize it, add a opinion, commentary, value, and share it with your list. And that's, um, I mean, I would think, what do you think, Nick? Is that, that That's probably the simplest model of all of them. Um, yeah. Um, and if you're willing to invest just a small amount of money, you could also um, be a like a subs subscribing member of uh, like news aggregators or news newsletters, like um, just subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. And uh, when they post, curate what they post um, or the equivalent of the Wall Street Journal for your industry. Yeah, I know um, there's a lot of finance newsletters and because of their job or their professional connections, they get to use the the Bloomberg terminal, which has like the, you know, 
cutting edge breaking news in the finance industry. So I know that's something they use. Um, so depending on how recent or breaking you want your coverage to be, uh, you could do some deep dives to find very specific paid resources to get these things. Um, and then if you're more, because uh, there's like growth hackers or what they, they call them indie hackers, people, you know, doing scrappy things to grow their businesses online. Uh, like I, in particular, I follow a lot of subreddits relating to business and I get a lot of good content there. Reddit's, well, yeah, well, Reddit's really good for that. Yeah, actually, I want to, I want to just emphasize that for a second, what you just said there. I would say that Reddit is a fantastic place to get content and topics of discussion. So if any of you are not using Reddit, um, so at reddit.com, um, and they have, it's broken down into what are called subreddits and each subreddit is on a very specific topic. So you can find all the subreddits in your niche market, subscribe to them. And it's a constant flow of, of useful information related to your market. Um, and, um, and then so for, for just a moment here, we're going to take a very quick commercial break and we will be right back with all of your uh, your questions on entrepreneurship, growing your business, AI or whatever it is that we can help you with. We'll be right back with all your questions in just a moment. If you get a member of Push Button AI, then what are you doing? So I would like to invite you to a free masterclass. We're going to be covering in detail how to create an entire digital online course, an entire business, in fact, that can be set up 100% using AI. And if you'd like to attend that free masterclass, what you're going to want to do is head over right now to pushbutton.ai slash free class. In that class, I'm going to show you how we can help two different kinds of people. Number one, if you've got a business and you want to add training, courses, or information to your existing business as a new profit center, or maybe a way to add value to your customers, then I'm gonna show you how to do a detailed 10 module training course, including 50 to 60,000 words of content, have it set up and built for you by AI. Also, if you're trying to start your first business online and you're looking for a great business model to make some money online, then Push Button AI is the right solution. And I'll show you how you can use this amazing tool to build an entire business like that. In a snap, Push Button AI will build an entire course for you, create video training, audio training, write your sales page for you, write 30 days of emails for you, create your logo, build your website, set up your shopping cart, set the entire thing up, create a members area so that people can pay you to get access to the course and you get to charge money and keep all the profits. It's quite easy. You answer two questions and you hit a button and it literally does everything for you. A logo, a 30 day email sequence, your sales pages for selling your product. It creates the entire training course that you can charge money for. It installs your website, sets up your hosting, launches your site. It even helps you pick the perfect domain name, all powered by AI. You just literally log in, and start up your brand new business. So attend the free masterclass. I'll show you a live demo of how it works. I'll explain the entire business model so you can see exactly how does it work and how do you profit. That's pushbutton.ai slash free class. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. You'll see it down below the video down there somewhere. Hit subscribe, hit the like button, and actually we'll make sure that you're notified next time that we go live. We release content all throughout the week, by the way. So we have videos on additional strategies and tactics. We'll be dropping to you all week long. Check out all of our useful content. Head over to pushbutton.ai slash free class if you're not yet a customer. Every paying customer, we're gonna be taking today's training. We'll take all the prompts, all the resources, everything that you need to use it, and we're gonna put it in your paid members area. So you'll see it in your AI profits course inside your members area. On that note, I'll see you there. Bye for now. Or not. <laughs> okay, hello and welcome back. Uh, we're gonna be doing your questions. So it's ask me anything, anything I can do to help you in your entrepreneurial journey, whether you're starting your first business or you're growing your existing business, ask any question. If you're having trouble with ad campaigns, or you want some advice on 
how to do some creative, whether it's on Twitter or on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever, uh, what, whatever that might be. Also, I do happen to know a thing or two about selling online. So if you have questions about selling on webinars, creating video sales letters, um, traditional written sales letters, using AI in your business, whatever it might be, I've got over two decades of experience and a hundred million dollars in hard won knowledge that I want to share with you. So ask those questions and I want to help you be more successful. Back to the questions. What do we got, producer Nick? Yeah. Uh, so I'll read this one verbatim. They say, how to prevent a newsletter content being on sold online? How would you prevent newsletter content from being or maybe resold online? I see. Like you have a paid newsletter and you don't want people stealing your content and passing it yeah. off as your own. I mean, I have a little bit of an unconventional way of looking at this is, is um, I just don't worry about it. You know, um, I've been ripped off. I've had courses taken where people re-upload them and give them away. I, I've had competitors steal software ideas and rip out, rip our code. Like I've had all kinds of things happen in all my years of business and I just don't think about it. I do my best to put my business out there. And if somebody does me wrong, I'll go after them. You know, don't get me wrong. If there's a legal ramification or some follow up I need to do, I do it and I don't let people get away with it. But I also don't obsess about it. And I've seen I've actually seen entrepreneurs never start their business because they're too worried about stuff like this. So what will end up happening is they get so worried about making sure that the content is protected and they use the right technology and everything is set up perfectly. And, I, and I'm not kidding. I've, I've had coached people that I have coached that spent months on this and never launched their business. Whereas I take a little bit of a different approach. I just get my stuff out there. And if someone tries to steal it, so be it. You know, I'm not worried about it. You know, I know I'm doing the right thing. I know most people are going to do the right thing. And will some small percentage of people try to steal some content? Probably. And I just don't care. So I just continue going about giving value and running my business. And so, you know, I would say for paid newsletters, just use the tools that you have available to you. You know, if all you can do is send your paid newsletter through email and you don't have a way to lock it behind a paywall, then just get started and just do that. And then as you later, as you figure out the technology or you're able to invest in some new stuff, then do that. You know, heck, I, ha I have businesses where I have literally made over a million dollars in sales with some information that is just a link. It's just a link with all the information on a publicly available page. I just don't make sure that it's not indexed in Google. But if someone found that link or they shared it with their buddy, they could get free access to, to the thing. And I've made millions of dollars with it and it's fine. So in fact, it, that business is no longer uh, uh, operating right now for other reasons. I shut that business down, but it made millions of dollars without ever having any kind of secured login, uh, some sort of crazy password or preventing people from being able to copy and paste. Like I didn't do any of those things and made over a million dollars with it. So anyway, next question. Yeah. Um, so this person has a, a Bible trivia board game and they say, I'm growing my list by offering a scripture memorization guide. What suggestions do you have to continue engaging with them so they open emails? Well, I would say you just continue to engage with them on the topic. You know, there's there. And, and if you're struggling with ideas, um, pop over to chat GPT and ask it for some ideas. So let, let, let's let's do that together. So here, I'm gonna we pull up my window. We're gonna do this together for a moment, real quick. So I'm gonna open up a new chat GPT window. And um, so what was the free giveaway again? He has, oh, sorry, my computer freaked out for a second. He has a, Bible trivia board game, and he offers a scripture memorization guide. Okay, I have a newsletter for Christians. Um, and a 
board game about verses. Um, I give away a scripture memorization guide to to get subscribers, and you give me ten ideas for content I could send my newsletter subscribers. Okay. There you go. And if 10's not enough, can you give me 50? <laughs> there you go. Now, of course, all of these may not be good, but it should help get the creative juices flowing so you can have some ideas um, about what you can talk with your audience about. And then who, who was whose question was that one? That was Bible Trivia Board Game. Okay, I don't, okay, so I don't remember, I, I don't know who you, I, if you're part of my challenge or if you've been part of some, any of my earlier trainings, but one of the things that I talk a lot about is the 10 problems, goals, and benefits of your market. And so I would suggest too that you mind that. And if you haven't heard that from me before, check out the channel archives in this channel. We do have training on the 10 problems, goals, and benefits method that I teach. Um, and if you have that, you can also use that as um, inspiration for what to talk to your audience about. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and then I don't know, were you in the challenge? I think you were maybe, I'm not sure. Were you in the challenge that we just finished? If you were, then use the customer avatar training that I did um, and that 10 problems, goals and benefits training, use that as inspiration um, for ideas about what to talk to your audience about. Okay. Um, fantastic. Okay. Next question. Yes. Um, commission reviews wants to know, how's it going? It's going pretty well, pretty well. So yeah, I just finished. Um, so those of you who are here with me from the challenge know, so I've been here doing this challenge. It's, um, we finished the core five days. I've been live with an audience every day for at, an absolute minimum of two hours a day, every day this week. Um, and then I have a few bonus sessions that I'm delivering to the members of the challenge. So it's been a lot of work. And then I did that after having just finished a launch, which doing a launch in and of itself is a lot of work. So it's been, uh, I'm doing fantastic, but I'm a little tired. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> a little tired. been doing a lot of talking. So it's going to be nice to actually spend a couple of days. And I won't be till next week, but sometime next week, I'm going to spend a couple of days not talking at all. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, next one. Gigi wants to know, um, well, do you still want to do uh, newsletter relevant ones or is it, is, is it open? Anything, at whatever. All right. Okay. So we're open at this point. Yep, yeah. Gigi fine. wants to know, uh, and this is about using chat GPT. Uh, what if you own NVIDIA software and already have an NVIDIA account? Do you need a specific NVIDIA chat software account? She's talking about like to use chat GPT. Oh, uh, no. So chat GPT is, is, um, not by NVIDIA. It's by open AI. So, OpenAI is a co the company that puts out ChatGPT, uh, and there is a free version, and then there's an upgraded version. It's I think it's twenty dollars a month um, for the upgraded version, um, and that but that's through OpenAI, which is a separate company than Nvidia. Um, so I, I hope I understood that question right. But that that's how you get access to ChatGPT, um, and you can go to just chat.openai.com. Um, and that will take you right in the process to sign up for either a free or a paid account. Um, and ChatGPT is not the only um, AI. So it's it's called a large language model. That's the what the AI that runs ChatGPT is called. And there are others. So uh, one example is Google is releasing Gemini. And so Google Gemini is their product. And you could Google Google Gemini and get access to that. But you could use it as well. Um, I still prefer ChatGPT at this point. I don't think Google Gemini 
it's a little faster than chat GPT, but I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm still a, a fan of chat GPT at the moment. Um, but Google Gemini does work really well. So that is an alternative. And then finally, there's also Claude, um, put out by a company called Anthropic. So and Claude's my favorite. Yeah, Claude's pretty good, although it's limited. So it's not available in all countries. Like I, they discriminate against Canadians for some reason. They won't let Canadians have it. I don't know why. Um, but other people I think around Canadian, the world. Are, I think Canada's kind of heavily regulating AI more than a lot of other yeah, countries. Australia is doing some weird stuff too. Hmm. Anyway, you have different choices. So, but those are, you know, I always default to showing you Chat GPT because that seems to be the popular one. That's the one that I like but you don't, you could use these other tools as well. All right. Next question. Oh, well, um, Bible trivia board game says, Oh wait, before we do that one, I, I just looked down at the chat. So Gigi is saying she was actually asking about Canva. Oh no, that was a separate question from oh, earlier. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cool. But for Canva, just for follow up for that, Gigi, just in case, you can use a free Canva account um, um, or a paid one. Um, and yeah. uh, Canva is in browser, so it's not like you know downloading Photoshop to your machine. the The quality of your machine's not going to affect uh, how Canva works. Yeah. So. And there are plenty of other tools. Canva is just one of many different design tools. Um, but yeah, you have to log in the Canva in your browser to make it work. And you could use the free or paid version, um, either one. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of other tools, um, for people who don't want to download Photoshop or pay, you know, for an Adobe membership, um, there's an alternative called PhotoP and it's free in browser. It's basically just like a Photoshop alternative. Um, so if you want to check that out, P, like a P in a pod, P E A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I dropped it in the chat. Uh, GG, you might find that interesting because you were asking some questions about Canva, um, which we will get to. There were a few um, from the first segment that we had to in, because we had to go to the next segment. We didn't get to, so I'm going to circle back to those in a second. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Way, happy Valentine's day, everyone, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, I get a double whammy every year. So I have Valentine's Day today, and then tomorrow is my wife's birthday. So we get to merge the two together. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got a busy week this week. Oh, boy, have I. Uh, it's yeah. been fun, though. Fun and exciting and tiring and stressful, all kind of rolled into one. Yeah. Okay, next question. Yeah, from Bible Trivia Board Game. He, she, Bible Trivia Board Game says, uh, my birthday is today, so I'm on vacation this week and was lucky enough to catch you on our way back to the hotel from dinner. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, happy birthday. So you're a day before my wife. That's cool. Yeah. And, um, okay, so that's current for, uh, like, the up-to-date stuff. Now I'm going to get back to the stuff. I told them we'd circle back to that we didn't get back to. So okay. bear with me. I'm just going back to that section of the chat. It's been busy in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's been an active day. Yes. So while Nick is looking backwards in the chat, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. You'll see the subscribe link down below. And uh, make sure that you tap it and subscribe to the channel so that you'll get notified Next time we're live, I would love to see you on the next episode. And also when we release content all week long, we drop content. You'll get notified of that as well. It's really useful stuff to help you grow your business. And uh, yeah, so subscribe and tap that like button if you haven't yet. So we so that YouTube knows that this is a good video and it's worth sharing with others. So and I would appreciate it. It helps me out and helps the channel. We've been working hard. We started this channel not that long ago and been trying to grow it. So it's still a fairly small channel. And I'd like to grow the channel and grow the community, especially. I want to, I've seen a lot of regulars that show up to the show every week. And um, I, I really would like to grow that community. So a like goes a long way. I appreciate it. Um, all right. 
Okay, so uh well it looks like Dale's birthday is Friday. So Yeah, happy birthday, Dale. So happy birthday all around to everyone. <laughs> Whoever, whoever's birthday is this week. <laughs> this week is packed. There's all, all kinds of stuff happening for everyone. Yeah. Okay, I, I I went back up from where we need to be in the chat. Yeah, let's go for it. So Gigi, this is the Canva question she wanted us to answer. She says, can you upload an image to Canva and have it give feedback on it ideas to improve it like if it's a logo? Um, and the answer is no, there's not like a chat feature inside of ChatGPT to get feedback and you know tips and improvement on your design. But what you can do uh, is take a design you have made in Canva, drop it into ChatGPT because ChatGPT has vision. It can look at your designs and ask it for feedback and ask it what it thinks. Um, I know there are custom GPTs that will actually do that. If you, they'll, you could drop a landing page, click a screenshot of a landing page or a screenshot of a logo or something. And it will give you uh, feedback based on design principles. Um, I don't I don't have any at the top of my head today. But when I was doing research for the segment and looking for GPTs, I found a few that will essentially do what you want Canva to do. Cool. Yeah, and I know, I know ChatGPT has vision. I think only the paid version has vision, though, I think. And You're right. I believe, I believe Gemini um, is is pretty good at vision too. So Google Gemini could be an option for that. I haven't used it. I'm just saying theoretically. But so you got Google Gemini, and then of course the premium chat uh, GPT. They could they could do that, GG. So. Yeah. And uh, uh, oh, I remember someone was asking if you knew about X39. Uh, it's the stem cell patch, apparently. Oh. You were at, you were asking them what the what it was because you didn't know. So. Okay, uh, so I'll go investigate that. I, I love research and stuff like that. So I'll go find out more. Yes. And I see I and... see birthday wishes going all around for everyone in the chat. So happy birthday again to everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell my wife you guys wished her happy birthday. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh oh. I missed the because of the very particular section of the chat I was looking at, and I scrolled down to the birthday stuff, but I missed it. But now I'm back to it. Okay, so well, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna take a quick commercial break. Can you believe it? I, I, I'm out of coffee. This is this is a travesty. So I'm gonna take a quick commercial break. I'll be right back with a new drink and the rest of your questions. So ask any questions you've got. This is the last call for questions. We we'll right back after this commercial break. Uh, and we'll see you in just a moment. For the president, celebrities or characters in this video are all fake and generated by artificial intelligence. You know, the other day while I was uh, resting my eyes, I woke up to find that I'd built an entire online business. Really, Joe? How'd you manage to do that? Well. Uh, you, you see, you, uh, I, uh, wait a minute, Sleepy Joe. Let me guess. You had push button AI do all the work, didn't you? That's right, Donald. It found me a fantastic domain name, built out a complete site, set up my shopping cart so I can get paid, and even wrote an entire email sales campaign for me, all while I was napping. Well, I've been using push button AI too. And believe me, my new business, it's huge. The best. So much winning, you wouldn't believe. This push button AI sounds phenomenal. Oh, it is. It's almost as genius as I am. But with better hair, no doubt. Guys, guys, all this talk is boring to me. What everyone needs to do is click the link of this video and go to the masterclass to see how to use this powerful technology to build their own profitable online business. Well, if Elon says it, it must be worth a shot. You're right, Barry. Everyone should click the link right now. I can't believe I'm going to agree with Joe, but this masterclass sounds like it's going to be huge. Absolutely terrific. The best masterclass ever given, probably. Okay, guys, how about we hit that link? Time is money. All right. And YouTube is doing its thing, but uh, we'll finish up here with the last questions. And uh, <laughs> I love that commercial. Um, and uh, producer Nick and I worked on it. Mostly producer Nick. He did 
quite a good job at that. Uh, I, I, I came out nice. I, I like that. So I want to make some more. Those those were uh, I got all kinds of ideas for more I wanted to make. Yeah, it would be fun. I mean, it was the creativity of using AI for stuff like that, or the songs that I make and stuff that, that we do is, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, the tech's advancing so rapidly since we made that. There's, It's even more advanced now, so there's more stuff we can do. Yeah, right on. And I see another birthday. Um, did I see that Tiha is also uh, had a birthday? You share a birthday with my wife, so that's cool. So another, yet another happy birthday. It's like a crazy birthday week. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap up today's questions. Yes. Okay. So this is um, when back on the GPTs from the beginning of the show. Uh, when we were on the negotiator GPT, this person asks, can GPT negotiate be made to operate adversarial negotiations rather than open collaborative solutions? I don't know the answer to that. Do you? I'm leaning towards no, be based off of what I know about, you know, the system prompts baked into chat GPT by open AI. They like their models to be non-controversial and amicable and friendly. So they might be averse to, you know, adversarial type topics yeah 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 it's it's a little frustrating like i, I don't know it, my opinion is that they have neutered their ai unfortunately um they're trying to make the ai be so like you said non-confrontational non-adversarial don't want it to say anything controversial and in a sense they're censoring it and so they prevent it from saying a lot of things and i've noticed that it that it has gotten, the results have gotten a little bit blander, which would make sense, right? Because they apply more and more of this censorship to the model. Yeah, I know one really interesting use case for ChatGPT way early was uh, people would write interesting books like thrillers and crime dramas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but since they started neutering ChatGPT and it doesn't want to talk about controversial things, when you talk about like a murder mystery or something, it won't, it's able, it you know, you ask it to write about the plot and it, it will refuse to because it's, oh, I don't want to write about murder or crime or like a cop story because that's like controversial. So, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'm with Elon on this topic. I believe that, I believe that AI should tell the truth, the facts, uh, even if the facts are offensive or difficult to uh, uh, um, confront. But yeah, anyway, that's. <laughs> I don't want to get off onto a political discussion. Yeah. I, I do yeah. believe that AI should be able to just tell the truth, period. So anyway. I, I have not experimented with Grok, Twitter, or X's new AI model, but suppose it's pretty offensive, actually. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Well, if that's so if that's a problem you're having with Chat GPT, uh, Grok might be a solution to that. So uh, maybe that maybe Grok can help you with uh, your adversarial negotiation question. I'm unsure, but no. yeah. Yeah, you, the, Grok used to have a feature, which by the way, if anybody doesn't know, Grok is Twitter's AI or X's AI that Elon is behind. Um, and it used to have a feature. I don't know if it'll still do this. Where you could ask it to roast you. And it will like go do research on you and then roast you. And I asked it to do that. And I got to tell you, it kind of hurt my feelings. Like, oh, <laughs> no, it was pretty <laughs> awful. <laughs> so anyway, uh, next question. <laughs> Can anyone make and sell a custom GPT? Uh, you can't sell them yet, but I know that's their plans is to be able to charge money for them. Um, right, Like now, an app store. Yeah. 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 It's basically, yeah. They want to build the, their version of the uh, Apple's app store. But. You have to be a pro user to make them. I don't think you have to be a pro user to use them, but to make them, you have to be a uh, pro. Yeah. Cool. What's next? Okay. So that's all the stuff that we missed. Let me come up to present time, see if there's anything new. Okay. Yeah. This is a good one from blog creator. Mm -hmm. He says, how do you decide if to sell a course for a one-time fee or on subscription? It largely has to do with your goals for your business. Um, both are perfectly awesome business models. Um, if you are up for the challenge of supporting an ongoing membership, 
then that I believe that's the superior model. But it does mean that you're uh, you now have to provide content and value to those users every month in some way. Okay, it's by either giving access to something, um, releasing new content, new reports, new trainings. It could be doing live sessions like, hey, like we're doing right now. I'm doing this one for free, but you could charge for it in a members area. Um, but um, if you're up for that challenge, then the monthly model is superior, in my opinion. Uh, but for some people, that's a hassle. You don't really want to deal with that. And you don't want to be on the hook for people that are paying you monthly. So go with a one time payment if that's the case. So it's more about the business model than really than anything else. And if you're looking for like an exit type event, like if you're looking for a business, you want to build a business asset that is valuable that you can sell. Um, one of the things that will raise the valuation of your business and make it more attractive is if you have, if your cash flows are more regular, if they're irregular or do they call them lumpy, uh, that can reduce the valuation of your business in some circumstances. So uh, if you course, if you have like a high ticket, um, like one time, purchase for a course and uh, you know they come in waves and they're not regular cash flows that might make your business less valuable than if it were a paid membership where cash flows came in regularly you know i know the 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 companies the software companies that get the big valuations they're always got monthly revenue baked into them so that makes sense yeah and i in some because i'm behind the scenes i'm in some like m a communities and uh, sometimes I'll see deals fall through because they're looking at their profit and loss statement and uh, the person who wanted to buy will turn down the deal because the cash, they'll call them lumpy cash flows. They're too irregular. They like to see steady evergreen cash flows. So cool. uh, I would prioritize building those into your business if you can. Yeah. And, and by the way, Producer Nick is an expert in the field of mergers and acquisitions. So anybody here who expert? Is, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I think you are. I think you are. Um, so it, it, you know quite a lot about the backstory about making deals happen, especially about value valuation of companies. Um, and uh, so if anybody does that, like either you're buying or selling or flipping, or there's so many things you can do with buying these businesses. Um, and it's sort of it's kind of like a, a almost like an addiction for me. I. <laughs> I'm constantly buying little businesses on sites like Flippa and um, Get Acquired and places like that. Um, so if anybody here is interested in that kind of stuff, um, we don't really talk about it on the channel a lot because I've always assumed that it was uh, something that most of our audience wasn't interested in. But, it's pretty niche, like pretty you know, uh, smaller community around it. Yeah, yeah. Who's interested? Let me know. Uh, so if you're live or in the chat later, let me know who's interested in... Um, this kind of content, mergers and acquisitions, buying and selling businesses, flipping businesses, um, building and selling businesses. That's actually a, a model that I've considered just build, building and then flipping businesses. I'm really good at starting a new business and ramping it up to with cash flow fast. Um, and uh, uh, so that's it's like my superpower, I guess you'd say. And so, um, I've considered that as a model for myself, actually, to not to then have to manage and deal with all of the day to day, but spin it up, launch it and then flip it. Um, but uh, but anyway, there's all sorts of uh, variations to this. Um, an example is I bought a business on eBay of all places, and that thing made millions of dollars over the years. So um, it, it can be. Uh, Didn't you buy it for like five thousand dollars? Yeah, it was three thousand, three thousand dollars. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought it on eBay. That was a long time ago. Bought that on eBay. Spent three thousand dollars, and then what I did is I kept making little improvements. So I bought it. It was cash flowing. It was making a little bit of money, um, not a lot. You know, like I think it was making like five hundred dollars a month. Um, and so um, I do a little tweak and improve it, and then I do another little tweak and improve it. And you know, I did that for about six months, and then. Boom, it just took off. Yeah. Cool. Oh, there does seem to be some interest in that. Uh, so, okay, well, maybe we can talk about that more, uh, Nick. So I know that's like your passion. You love this this topic. So um, it's a little, um, like, what's the word, like higher level, not very uh, wide appeal. But 
it's interesting. I, I like talking about it. Cool. Well, there's interest in the topic, so you know we can we'll give it a shot. We'll try some content and see how it goes. Yeah. All right. So then we're going to be wrapping up. Is there any other questions that we need to answer before we wrap up? And I go rest my voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. I think we are up to present time. We're caught up. All right. Fantastic. Well, hey, everybody out there, happy birthday. Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm super glad that you hung out with me today. I really appreciate that. And hopefully you got some value out of today's training. If you did, tap that like button, tap that subscribe button. And then, of course, um, if you're interested in our push button AI technology, I'll play another quick little commercial about that in just a moment where you can get a live demo where somebody will join you on Zoom, help you work out how you can use our powerful AI technology to build an entire business for you. So I'll play a quick commercial about that and you can book your appointment by going to pushbutton.ai slash demo. Uh, but on that note, um, um, I want to really, again, thank you very much for being part of the show and we'll see you next time. Producer yeah. Nick, thank you for all your help. For Bye, sure. everyone. One, one more thing. Oh, let's, okay. uh, let's, okay. let's plug the very last. This went out Monday and there's a new one going out tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. The last YouTube video that came out. It's about affiliate marketing. And I'm going to drop that in the chat. But, uh, Ooh, okay, yeah, share that with everyone. It's a brand new video that we dropped on the channel. Go watch it and uh, drop a comment. Go Just to say, drop Hey Bill in the comments <laughs> on the video that producer Nick is sharing right now. <laughs> Go say hi to me over there. Yeah, I think you'll like it. It's uh, the old way of doing affiliate marketing is dead. Do this instead. So uh, go check it oh, out. That's right. We made a rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. If you who are not yet a push button AI customer, then you need to check this out. And all you need to do is go to pushbutton.ai slash demo, pushbutton.ai slash demo. And you can get a live one-on-one -on -one appointment to get on Zoom and see this powerful technology in action. And with Push Button AI, it will build an entire business from bottom to top, everything you need from your domain name to your logo, to videos, to audio lessons, an entire course that you can sell as your own, a 30 day email sequence that it writes. You can send a daily email for 30 days, all written by AI and a whole lot more. It writes your sales page. If you're not sure how to write an expert sales page to convince people to buy stuff, it writes it for you. It writes a free report that you can give away to get subscribers to your list. It even creates and writes the opt-in subscription page to get people to subscribe to get the free report. And it goes on and on and on. It even writes your first 10 blog posts for you and it can do so much more. Social media posts, ads, all of these things are done and all you have to do is answer a couple of questions and push a button. Now, Push Button AI is not available to the public at the time of recording this video. And the only way to get in is by invite to our behind the scenes beta access. And during your live demo, we'll show you the technology. We'll actually work with you to actually map out an entire course that you could sell as your own. We'll outline the course with you together on the one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And then if you so decide, if you're a good fit, you can come in, join our push button AI beta program and be in business with that very course by the next day. Go to pushbutton.ai slash demo to figure out if this powerful technology is right for you. You can register there. You'll book an appointment in the calendar. Be sure you show up. Our team will be very excited to meet you and show you how the tech works, outline your new course for you. And hopefully it's a fit and we can work together to launch your next business. Macintosh teaches AI non-stop. Success is his game. Marketing's his fame. Macintosh, the marketing ace. Follow his lead to the winning place with AI McCullough Spin. Join him now, learn to win. Learn his way, don't delay. If you do, you'll make your fortune today.
You can now launch your own online business with the click of a mouse. Sounds crazy, right? Guess what? It's now possible thanks to our game-changing AI software that's helping beginners build a successful online business. If you have tried and failed at building an online business or you've got no idea where to start, there is good news for you. We are entering a new exciting era of AI, and I'm here to teach you how to use it to build and grow an online business. Because I'm handing you a blueprint, a business in a box powered by AI, and it's called Push Button AI. Imagine a tool so smart it does all the heavy lifting for you. Builds an info product business, sets up hosting, launches the website, and even crafts engaging email sequences. Here's the thing. This isn't like anything else out there, and this is based on what's working right now. Push Button AI is based on my experience of generating over $100 million over the last 20 years and helping over 81,942 customers build and grow their own online businesses. If you'd like to find out more about this, Register now and dive into my free live demo to uncover strategies and traffic tricks that will pivot your business and skyrocket your online business from surviving to thriving. Imagine what your life would look like today if you bought Bitcoin when it was $1. You now have the same opportunity with Push Button AI since nobody else is doing this. Don't miss out this time. you who are not yet a push button AI customer, then you need to check this out. And all you need to do is go to pushbutton.ai slash demo, pushbutton.ai slash demo, and you can get a live one-on-one -on -one appointment to get on Zoom and see this powerful technology in action. And with push button AI, it will build an entire business from bottom to top Everything you need from your domain name to your logo to videos to audio lessons, an entire course that you can sell as your own, a 30-day email sequence that it writes. You can send a daily email for 30 days, all written by AI, and a whole lot more. It writes your sales page. If you're not sure how to write an expert sales page to convince people to buy stuff, it writes it for you. It writes a free report that you can give away to get subscribers to your list. It even creates and writes the opt-in subscription page to get people to subscribe to get the free report. And it goes on and on and on. It even writes your first 10 blog posts for you. And it can do so much more. Social media posts, ads, all of these things are done. And all you have to do is answer a couple of questions and push a button. Now, Push Button AI is not available to the public at the time of recording this video. And the only way to get in is by invite to our behind the scenes beta access. And during your live demo, we'll show you the technology. We'll actually work with you to actually map out an entire course that you could sell as your own. We'll outline the course with you together on the one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And then if you so decide, if you're a good fit, you can come in, join our Push Button AI beta program and be in business with that very course by the next day. Go to pushbutton.ai slash demo to figure out if this powerful technology is right for you. You can register there. You'll book an appointment in the calendar. Be sure you show up. Our team will be very excited to meet you and show you how the tech works, outline your new course for you, and hopefully it's a fit and we can work together to launch your next business. For the present use, celebrities or characters in this video are all fake and generated by artificial intelligence. You know, the other day while I was uh, resting my eyes, I woke up to find that I'd built an entire online business. Really, Joe? How'd you manage to do that? Well, uh, you, you see, you, uh, I... Uh, Wait a minute, Sleepy Joe. Let me guess. You had Push Button AI do all the work, didn't you? That's right, Donald. It found me a fantastic domain name, built out a complete site, set up my shopping cart so I can get paid, and even wrote an entire email sales campaign for me, all while I was napping. Well, I've been using Push Button AI, too. And believe me, my new business, it's huge. The best. So much winning, you wouldn't believe. This push button AI sounds phenomenal. Oh, it is. It's almost as genius as I am. But with better hair, no doubt. Guys, guys, all this talk is boring to me. What everyone needs to do is click the link of this video and go to the masterclass to see how to use this powerful technology to build their own profitable online business. Well, if Elon says it,
It must be worth a shot. You're right, Barry. Everyone should click the link right now. I can't believe I'm going to agree with Joe, but this master class sounds like it's going to be huge. Absolutely terrific. The best master class ever given, probably. Okay, guys, how about we hit that link? Time is money. <laughs>